We're here at Eurocitori 2018 and I'm speaking with Nir Khan, Design Director of Plasan. Nir, we're standing beside the, the latest generation of Plasan's Sandcat, a, a vehicle that's been around for a, a number of years now. C could you talk us through the, the evolution of the product and perhaps outline some of the changes and advances in this latest generation uh, evolution? Uh, yes, thank you. The, the Sandcat has been around since 2004, that was the first time that we showed the Sandcat and it's been through a few evolutionary changes. So this is really the fourth generation of Sandcat. The previous three generations have been sold in more than 16 countries over, over five continents to a very wide range of users. Um, from police on the one side of the spectrum through SWAT, uh, uh, border patrol, border police, uh, the military police up to full on uh, military and combat vehicles. Um, and through that we've uh, um, really developed a, a good understanding of the broad needs of these different users. So the, the fourth generation Sandcat um, has a new architecture, a new modular uh, architecture, which allows us to more easily tune the vehicle to answer the needs of particular uh, users and their requirements. So this comes uh, as it, both in terms of the modularity of the armour level in the peripheral direction, the 360 degree armour. This vehicle uh, is between roughly Stanag 2 to, to Stanag 3. Um, it can now be tuned more specifically for uh, specific requirements. But the real new uh, thing that we're bringing to the uh, fourth generation Sandcat is the option of much higher mine protection than we'd offered in the past. Um, we will still be offering the uh, uh, kind of the, the classic uh, Sandcat, which has always sat on the Ford F550 Super Duty uh, platform, including the chassis. Um, but this new MLPV version that we've launched today, uh, this week at uh, Eurosatory um, is the first vehicle that actually has a, a monocoque floor. So this is the new option, is uh, to have a, a monocoque floor with blast protection, much higher blast protection. The monocoque floor um, consists of a uh, underbelly, which is part of the structural part of the vehicle. Inside there are floating floors. On the floating floors there are uh, um, foot pads which absorb the, the last little remaining bits of energy before there's any impact into the, uh, into the legs of the occupants. And of course our energy absorbing seats as well, um, which uh, protect the, the spine and ultimately save the lives of the eight people who are sitting inside the vehicle. Um, uh, and two points from what you've just said, um, Ford F550, um, the, the, the base Sandcat is based on the F550 chassis, the, is this latest monocoque version, does this still use F550 components and in your description of the vehicle you used the wonderful floating floor. People often talk of floating floors but not many really understand what they are could you give us a brief description of the floating floor? Yes, of course. To, to answer the first question, yes, both the uh, regular new Sandcat and the MLPV, uh, mine protected version, are both based around the same durable, reliable and, and, uh, and serviceable uh, Ford F550 uh, uh, drivetrain and platform. The difference with the MLPV is the only real difference is that instead of the, the chassis rails of the, uh, of the regular Sandcat, um, those have been replaced by the structural monocoque. And this is really part of the new modular architecture that allows us to do that. And it's worth pointing out that over the next few months and, uh, and years, we will see different variations of this uh, architecture that will really show the flexibility of it. Um, in terms of floating floors, so blast protection is really about uh, two different elements. The first, perhaps the more obvious one, is simply uh, stopping the, the shrapnel from entering the vehicle. The uh, belly of the vehicle, the floor of the vehicle needs to obviously not crack open, nothing can come flying up inside the vehicle. Um, but to save the people inside the vehicle, it's really more like an egg box. Um, you can have a steel egg box and throw it from the Eiffel Tower just down the road here and do it so that the box doesn't crack, um, but the eggs aren't going to be so healthy inside. And really, people are like eggs. Um, so, in addition to the uh, to the um, to the underbelly, um, there are a number of different ways that we um, reduce the amount of energy of the impact into and the accelerations into the people that are sitting in the vehicle. So, the first of those, for, in terms of the the feet, um, is a floating floor. So, the floating floor um, is instead of 
foot rests and all kinds of places, you know, put feet here and things like that. We believe in ergonomics first. The, the people inside are, are human beings who just want, they're out there to do a job and they need to be comfortable to do their job. So we give them a plain, simple, open floor. This is all invisible to them, really. Um, but the floating floor is uh, a separate system from the um, energy absorbing uh, part of the vehicle that's really trying to take as much energy with it as possible, leaving the floating floor um, with, with lower accelerations. And then on that floating floor is a, as a second layer, there are the foot pads, which is that last line of defense to reduce that impact that goes up through the leg, which ultimately is what breaks people's legs in, uh, in these kind of blast impacts. And then the other element is the energy absorbing seat. So we've got the floating floors and foot pads taking care of the, the occupant's legs, and then the energy absorbing seat, which reduces the impact through the, as I say, through the spine, up through the spinal cord, and, and ultimately is what normally, um, unfortunately, would, uh, would seriously injure or, or kill the people inside the vehicle. And those energy absorbing seats, the EA seats, um, also need to work twice. The first blast, even on a, a, a nine ton vehicle like this, can lift the vehicle a couple of meters up into the air. Um, and then it drops back down again. Um, and a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of vehicles don't actually account for that secondary impact of the, of the drop down. It can be not quite as significant, but it's, it's not enough simply to have survived that initial upwards acceleration. You need to be able to absorb the downwards one as well. Excellent. Thank you for that very clear and concise explanation. And what else have you improved on this latest generation Sandcat? Well, we've taken advantage of the, the, the fourth generation redesign to improve the, the already uh, high class, high standard uh, vehicle. So we always put a lot of effort into ergonomics, into the user interface. Our, our attitude is that you know, we're giving guys a tool to do a job and the, the armour um, really should be invisible to them. We don't want people you know, opening a door and saying, oh, this is, it's, it's heavy, the windows are small, it's hard to see out, and, but that's the price you pay to be protected. That's simply not acceptable to Plasan. We want the users to be sitting in the vehicle and saying, this is a great vehicle, it's comfortable, I've got a good view, they're out there to do a job, and you know, really we should be giving them a, a tool that lets them do the job well. So for the new generation, one of the things that we've improved, and it's just a detail, but we've improved the uh, door handles and lock mechanism, actually our own door handle design that we've developed, just to make the door easier and nicer to open. I can demonstrate, unfortunately, people at home won't be able to, won't be able to feel this, but uh, it's... Um, In addition to the new Sankat, Plasan have also shown the Hyrax, a much smaller protected vehicle. Uh, I understand that's based on a G-Class chassis. Um, traditionally, a lot of vehicles of this that class have been based on the Toyota Land Cruiser, the Toyota 200 series. Um, why did Plasan choose the Mercedes chassis as opposed to one of the, the, the Toyotas? Um, well, I'm not going to talk about other vehicles, but I'm going to explain why we chose the g -Buggin. Um The, the G-Class chassis um, comes out of the factory, the Daimler factory in, uh, in, in Austria, um, authorised for a 4.8 tonne GVW. So we're not taking a lighter civilian chassis and then stretching it way beyond its capabilities. We're taking a reliable, durable, proven, well-known chassis that's in use in militaries around the world, and we're making no modifications to it whatsoever. We're not shortening it, we're not changing the suspension, we're not upgrading the brakes, we don't need to do anything to it at all because it's already uh, uh, certified as a 4.8 tonne vehicle. Um, the other beauty of the, of the G-Wagon um, is that it's really the, the physical interfaces are actually quite simple and straight. So when you take a civilian vehicle, there are a lot of complications, especially at the front end, between the, the, the wings and the firewall and all these various parts to interface to what are normally fairly flat armor panels. Um, Ours is a much simpler kit to assemble. Um, so the actual assembly of the vehicle is much lower cost and much easier. Um, we, in the Hyrax as well as in the Sandcat, um, we utilize what we call the kitted hull. This is a Plasan concept um, of a bolted and bonded armored hull, as opposed to a welded box. Um, there are numerous advantages to this, uh, one of them being the possibility of local assembly or, or local manufacture, because it's a very simple kit to assemble. You don't need a big welding jig um, to assemble it. If we want to uh, assemble a small run of them close to a, uh, an end user, 
we don't need to uh, establish a very expensive line to do that. Um, they can be assembled locally really quite easily. Um, and the other advantage of that architecture is the ability to uh, um, reduce costs in the long term in terms of repairability, in terms of maintainability. Really the Hyrax has really been designed for low cost of operation. This is why we chose the G-Wagon platform, it's why we've uh, used our, our kitted hull architecture. These vehicles get damaged over the course of time, whether it's from accidents or from being shot at. And the kitted hull actually has a level of repairability that welded hulls simply don't have. You can bolt off the uh, damaged panel and I'm not just talking about the, the secondary layer, the kind of what is normally referred to as an add-on panel, but the, the inside layer, the fundamental wall of the vehicle, can be bolted off and bolted back on to repair it or to upgrade it or to change it. Uh, we're showing here the, the three-door variant. Um, it, it is entirely possible for a user to order a few hundred of the three doors five years down the line to decide that actually they want to convert 30 of them into five door bodies and we would be able to provide new side panels that they would bolt off the old ones and bolt the new ones on and convert them into a five door. Um, the, the vehicle we're showing at the show here um, has actually been undergoing some uh, 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 quite a bit of road testing, thousands of uh, kilometres of road testing um, over the last few months um, with a different roof with a, a simpler round turret uh, for a roof. We wanted to show it with this RCWS here at uh, Eurosatory. So really a, a week before the show, the vehicle came in from its road test. We unbolted the old roof. We bolted on the new roof with the RCWS integration. Um, and really the day later, we posted it to Paris. <laughs> that's excellent. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed.